Han en hår i vårt våg i vårt vinser på. Amen. Yesterday, many of us gathered here at the Armenian Church of the Holy Resurrection for a once in a, I think, 40 year occurrence, which was a day of spring clearing, we called it. If you weren't aware that we had been doing this, maybe on the way in, you passed a dumpster, which was quite full, as you might have noticed. That may have tipped you off as to what we were up to yesterday. I think for all who were involved, we could say quite universally that it was a wildly successful day. I actually think that most of us feel that it was far more successful than we had anticipated. And of course, part of the day, the focus of the day, was to take items that were no longer serving the needs of our parish or that just frankly were past their usable life and either finding a new use for them or if they were no longer usable of disposing of them properly. It was interesting, I think many of us, we were walking through the building at the end of the day, maybe through the attic, through the closets or various spaces. Many of us had an interesting feeling, almost a pit in our stomachs, a lingering, nervous feeling. We saw all of these open spaces, and the question creeped into our minds, what is going to prevent the old clutter simply from being replaced by new clutter? And actually, that fear, that sentiment is what's at the heart of today's Gospel reading. The last portion, where we hear Christ warning about the very same danger when we go through a process of doing a spiritual spring clearing, when we clear out our spiritual homes. And of course, in this context, it's clearing out the homes of our souls. And so Christ uses an analogy. He talks about a man who has an unclean spirit within him. And this unclean spirit departs, it's cleared out. And this unclean spirit goes and it travels through wireless places, it doesn't find a new place to dwell. And so it decides to return back to its home, which was the man that it had been cast out of. And when the evil spirit comes back, what does he find? He finds his home has been empty and swept and put in order, which for most of us, we think is a good thing, right? But when the evil spirit returns to this man and he finds this large, empty space, what does he say? He says, wow, there's plenty of room, not just for me, but for a bunch of my friends as well. And so he goes out. He goes out and he gets seven spirits to return with him that were even more evil than the original spirit. And they go and they dwell in the man. Kind of an unusual story that we hear from our Lord today. But what's at the heart of this story is the fact that when we try to expel evil from our lives, we cannot leave a void. The evil that we expel from our lives must be replaced with something good. I think an analogy could be helpful for us to understand this. On this past week, I went to the dentist, and of course, when you go to the dentist, what's the one thing on your mind the whole time that you're there? Oh boy, I hope I don't have a cavity, right? Because you know the process that's going to take place. Dentist is going to come in in a rather unpleasant process and drill out your tooth. Dentist is going to come and remove all of the bad stuff from your tooth, and yet, the dentist's job does not end there. What does the dentist proceed to do? but fill in that hole that has been made in your tooth with a filling. Why does the dentist do this? He does this because if he does not, then more infection will end up entering that tooth and make things worse than they were even before. This is certainly true for our spiritual lives. When we remove evil from our lives, bad habits, reckless living, maybe even toxic relationships, whatever this thing might be that's in our lives that is harming us or those around us, that's not the end of our jobs. If we do not fill our lives with Christ, 
this will certainly lead to the coming of seven spirits even more evil than the first. We cut something bad out of our lives, and what do we do if Christ does not enter? Often, we get a feeling of self-righteousness. Look at me. I did a good job. I was, I was really struggling with this thing, but I was able to overcome it. Maybe we get filled with a spirit of cynicism, right? Oh, I was able to do this, but no one around me would be able to do it. Maybe we get a martyr complex, right? Oh, all of the torture that I'm putting myself through to try to be a good Christian, to try to change my life. How much effort it's taking, how much struggle it's taking. Wow, God must be proud of me, right? Because of all the effort I'm putting in. And the worst case scenario, of course, of all is pride. Pride. Look at me and what I've accomplished. How wonderful I am. It would have been better that the bad habit or the reckless living or the toxic relationship, whatever we cut out of our lives, had just stayed because these spirits are much worse than the first. And so, it's a two-part process. Whenever we're cutting evil out of our lives, we must also insert the good. We actually demonstrate this liturgically in a beautiful way. Um, specifically at the beginning of baptism, but also before many other services as well. Where we all face the West. We all face away from the altar. We all face away from the throne of God. And what do we do? But we renounce evil from our lives. We exorcise demons, actually. We ask that the devil might stay away from us. We take the bad out. But we don't stop there. Immediately, we turn a 180. And we turn back and face the altar of God. We turn back and face the light of knowing who God is. And we say, now that I've committed to Getting this evil out of my life, I must have something to fill the void. And that can only be Jesus Christ, our Lord. We often think of being a Christian as simply being the same as being a good person. I don't quite know what that means, but that's what we have in our minds, some vague sense of being a good person. Often what we mean when we say this is that being a Christian is about living a decent life, right? Being relatively in control of my decisions, being pleasant and kind to other people, avoiding the obvious no-nos of Christianity. And yet, our faith is about so much more than this. Christianity is not simply about avoiding evil in this world, but about filling our lives with the good. And the only source of true goodness, the only source of something that is actually good and doesn't just hold the appearance of goodness, is Christ himself. And so the challenge of today's gospel reading is the following. How am I, after removing evil from my life, actively trying to add Christ in to my life? How am I finding ways to spend time with him? How am I finding ways to be in communion with him? Which, of course, begins by the reception of Holy Communion. The primary way that our Lord gives us to be in unity with him, but it doesn't end there. It continues with us taking Christ from this sacred sanctuary and bringing him out into the world with us. Do I consult him in my decisions? Do I actively try to discern his will for me in my life? Do I make it a habit of offering him praise for all things in my life, both the blessings and also the struggles? And when I am experiencing those struggles, do I lean on him for support? Frankly, all this to say, am I allowing his presence to be within the home of my soul. 
dear brothers and sisters, with Christ present in the homes of our souls, no evil spirit will be able to stay very long at all. I'm not saying that adversity will not come our way, but any evil that we do encounter will never consume us. It will never take hold within us. We truly can trust in the conviction that in Christ, all evil has and will continue to be conquered through the power of his love. And we know this so certainly. Why? Because he demonstrated it when he expelled the deepest of evils from his own home. When he expelled the evil of death in his own body as he was hanging on that cross by showing us the miracle of his resurrection. Glory, honor, and worship to the all-holy trinity who desperately desires to expel all evil spirits from our lives by coming and making their home within us. Amen.